All right, so now for the last part of our uh, lecture for um, the text animators, uh, I want to go through the process of animating a piece of text being written in. So this is an example of a piece of text being written in. It's loading. <laughs> Let's just turn motion blur off, and that way we'll see it faster. There we go. So we have a couple things that are happening in this. Uh, one of them is we have this um, stroke that's going around it. That's what's actually being written in. And then the other part of this is the actual filling of the words is just kind of like floating in there. It's kind of like filling it up. Okay, but you can see how the word sweet, it looks like a P, uh, but it's an S. <laughs> yeah, uh, it says sweet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can see how that's being written on there. If I turn these off, you can see just how that gets written. Uh, if I turn these other ones on down here, This is just another one that's uh, been done, and this one is actually writing on each one of the solid pieces of, of lettering. Okay, um, I'm more concerned that you have some way to show something being written on, so you can kind of you can leave the design up to you as to how you want to do that. Um, I just want to show you a couple different ways. You pick which one you like best, and then go from there. All right, sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna watch that in real time. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go to a new composition, uh, 960, 540, 30 frames, yes. All right, so for this type of thing, uh, we will not start in After Effects. Um, if I go here and I start typing in my word, um, this doesn't give me anything for After Effects to actually write the wording uh, out. So I'm going to go into Illustrator, and I'm going to create my word right here. So this is the word that I picked, which is sweet. Um, I don't know why their S looks so weird, but whatever. That's their font. Um, this is exactly the same thing as Illustrator, which, or as After Effects was doing, just text. So I need to create outlines on it. So if you've never done this before, under Type, you go to Create Outlines, and that takes your text and actually makes each one of these pieces outlined. Okay, And then you can ungroup it and then uh, do different things with it. So this is just straight up outlines. Um, I'm going to take this word into After Effects. All right, so I'm just going to copy that as is and bring that into After Effects. So I'm going to drop it onto a new solid, 96540, paste it in place. Okay, um, After Effects will read all of this as a mask. That's why how it comes in. That's why when I click on this, we get all these fancy colors. Um, it's reading each one of these pieces as a mask. You'll see the S is kind of hidden. Ignore that. It doesn't matter. Okay, um, cool. So I'm going to make another new solid, and I'm just going to use that as a template for now. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to use um, this effect. There's two effects that we're going to utilize. One of them is called Write On, and it's under uh, rent, uh, Generate, Write On. This effect works by keyframing this brush position. So if I set a key at point A, I set a key at point B, it'll draw a line between those two things. <clears throat> Just to give you a quick uh, example of that, I turn my keyframes on, I go up here, I move this over there, and you'll see how it draws the line going into that spot. If I come up a little bit further, move that over here, come up a little bit further, move that over here, it's going to basically draw that shape out of what I just put into those positions. Okay. Um, now, we don't want, obviously, to have to go through each one of those things and write out the letter. That's why we have this stuff down here. Uh, I'm going to go into my masks. I'm going to click on my mask path for number one and copy it. Go up here to my uh, medium solid, go to brush position, and then just paste that. And what that does is it actually pastes that um, path as my keyframes. Okay. So now when I hit play, You'll see how it writes, boom, there's my word, or my part of the word anyway. Okay. Um, now, we'll see that this is very dotted. Um, just like Photoshop, as you use your Photoshop brush, uh, the spacing on the brush will dictate how far apart each brush line is, right? So, same thing here. We have uh, stroke length, uh, not brush, stroke length, we have uh, brush spacing right there. 
It's 0 0.01. That sounds small, but it's not small enough apparently. So we'll go to 0 0.001, and now it fills it in perfectly. We can play with the brush size if we need to. There we go. Um, some other things we can adjust. So there is a color in here, so obviously we can change the color. We can change the hardness of the brush. Some of these are hard to see unless you're like really zoomed in or the brush is really big. Yeah, we're not seeing a huge change with this one. Uh, here's the opacity, um, stroke length. I don't think I need to worry about that now. Yeah, we can ignore stroke length for now. We don't need to worry about that. Um, then we have these at the bottom. So this is paint time properties. Basically what they do is this. I'm going to set a keyframe for my color. I'm going to scooch up to this spot. And then I'm going to give this, let's say, red. So you'll see that as this wrote the word or the letter, it started off white and then it gradually turns into red. Okay? Because this paint time property is on red or on color, it'll automatically keyframe the color as it goes. If this is set to none, it'll just shift the color of the entire thing. Okay? So it's white at the start and then it gradually gets red all over. Sometimes you want that. I've never needed that. I typically want this on so that I have this thing going, you know, one color to another. Um, you can also do opacity. So if I wanted certain areas to be opaque or certain areas to be um, uh, softer, I could do that as well. Um, let's see what else. I can also go to brush time properties and do size hardness or size and hardness. And they work the same way. I can say, okay, the size of the brush is going to be two here. I'll go to the end of this and I'll set this to one and we'll see how it gets softer gradually over time. If I didn't use that, it would do the entire thing and shrink the entire thing down. Okay. Now, if I wanted, uh, this is one letter. If I wanted this letter to go faster or slower, I'm going to zoom in here and take a look at the keyframes that it pasted. Notice that this is a diamond. This is a diamond, but all these other ones are like tiny circles. Um, the only keyframes that we actually have are the far sides of this. The rest of them are basically called breakdowns, meaning that they're kind of linked to those other two keyframes. As I move them in and out, it'll adjust the spacing of all of them. Yes, sir. You can think of them like that. They're kind of like relationship keyframes. So it's saying, okay, I, this is the path that we're going to go. But if I wanted to adjust the speed of it, instead of grabbing all of them and moving them individually, I just grab this and just make that bigger. And you can see how it stretches out all the keyframes in the middle. Or if I squeeze them, it compresses all of them. Right? So if I want this to take longer, I can just do that, and then rewind and hit play. And now that will take, obviously, a little bit longer to do. Okay. Now, I have, obviously, other parts of this piece of text that I need to get in here. Um, and again, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, this is one way to do it if you wanted to keep everything on one layer. I go back to mask path number two. I copy it. I come up here. I go after this guy. And then I click on my brush position and I paste it. Okay, so now that puts the second part of that letter right there. So now it's going to write this one on here. Now you can see what happened as it jumped from one part to the second part. We got that little bump right in the middle. Okay, so this is the annoying part of doing it this way, is I would have to use this size and hardness, um, set the size to zero here. Let me go back one frame this way, set this back to one. There we go. All right, so it's back to one where it was. Then it's set to zero. And then right before it starts up again, I'm going to hit the diamond for brush size, then go up to that keyframe and then set that, let's say, back to one. Okay. And basically what I'm doing is saying don't have any hardness right between those areas of where you're going to be writing. So now we'll get this and then it writes the other part. Okay. Now the other way to do that is just have a separate layer. Every one of my layers, I could just do the exact same thing on. So let's undo that. All right, so that's back to where it was. I'll just scoot this down to here. There we go. And I'm just going to duplicate um, this solid. Um, go to my keyframes. And then just copy that path. Delete these keyframes. 
rewind it, and then paste. So now they're both going to happen pretty much at the same time. Um, I don't see the other one happening. One of the options inside the write on is to paint style on the original image, which is currently just a blue solid, uh, or on transparent, which is what I'd want to do. So now rewind and play, and you'll see both of those being written at the same time. So for every one of my shapes, I would go through and I would have a new layer for each one of these things, and then just move the layer down to time out when it's supposed to happen. So if I go to here, and I say, okay, you end right about four seconds, so you're gonna start right about four seconds. Okay, and so now we have it where it looks like it's writing on. Now this is the inside After Effects method. Everything is baked into um, the software, there's no plugins needed, it's just right there. Um, now, if you're fancy, and we have a fancy plugin, we're gonna use a fancy plugin because this method is way too long. Uh, I'm going to go to that solid that has all the masks on it. I'm going to go to Effect. I'm going to go to RG Trap Code. And I'm going to go to 3D Stroke. Um, if you don't have Trap Code at home, you can download Trap Code. You can use all their plugins um, that we have. You'll have a red X on your screen when you go home, when you do your stuff, when you render. But when you come here, it'll unlock because it'll recognize our license. Okay? So I'm going to go to 3D Stroke. And you'll see that it immediately strokes everything inside here. Um, I'm going to take the thickness down. There we go. And I'm going to um, look at the start and the end here. I'm also going to turn this off so I don't have to see that. Um, if you remember from the animators and from the trim path thing, we have this start and end. And that's how we were animating the um, trim path. And that's how we we're animating the effectors coming on. Same thing here, if I animate this start, you can see how I can make the letters all just disappear all at the same time. Same thing there. Okay, I can do the same thing on the end and have that happen. So if I just set a keyframe on end, go up to, I don't know, eight seconds, pull that up, and now we'll have all of these animating at the exact same time. Now, we typically don't want everything to animate at the exact same time because that's really, uh, it's too much stuff happening. So if we say stroke sequentially, it'll do path one, path two, path three, path four. There we go. So very easily we were able to just paste these paths into After Effects, add the 3D stroke, um, animate this end, and now it's writing it onto the screen. If we wanted to change any of those things about how it's writing each letter, um, if you didn't like specifically, um, let's say, let's say the P here, I didn't want it to start in this corner. I'm going to jump back to Illustrator real quick and take a look at this letter. Um, I would want to change where the start point is. So it's using this as its starting point. So typically you would just cut somewhere else. Let's just say I wanted it to start here for some reason. I would use my scissor, I would cut in an area, I would delete that section, and then I would re-put that section back in and keep it nice and smooth. And now After Effects will recognize that as my new starting point and go that way around it, okay? Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, another thing to kind of look at as it's writing this, you'll see that we have some overlap. Let's go to the end. So you'll see where the W and the E and the E and the T come together. We basically have strokes on top of each other, and I don't want that to happen. So I may want to go into Illustrator and grab all of these, um, open up my Pathfinder, and just say Combine. Now they're all part of the same mask, same shape. I'm going to copy this. And this is, again, one of the great things about this uh, is that all we have to do is just delete the masks, paste the masks on again. You see they're nice and neat. Um, it's using our paths. Yep, so everything's good. So I just deleted it and repaste it. This is one of those instances where it starts on the right side. I probably want to start on the left side and then go the other way. Okay. And you can see it in here. If I click on this, I turn my paths, my masks back on. You'll see where it's using this as its starting point right there. 
hard to see by this little dot right there. Uh, so I would jump into Illustrator and then fix that. Okay, so that's two ways you can do it. You can use the right on. You can use the trap code stroke. Um, now let's see how we can do full blown like filled in letters. Um, so I'm still starting Illustrator. Um, the change though is that I have to start breaking this up. Okay, what I want to do is let me. Um, I'm going to import this into here. Close. Where are you at? Oh, I already didn't do that. Okay. I thought I had a cleaned up version, but I don't have a cleaned up version here. Sweet. All right. I'm just going to merge everything so we can see this inside here into comp three. Turn this off. Drop sweet down. There it is. Okay. So the way that we are going to do this is we're going to use a combination of that same right on effect or same stroking effect um, and we want to reveal the letters as we go. So if I just use my pen tool and pick a different color, let's go with white. Um, a little bit of adjustment, but I can tweak that obviously after. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to take this word suite and I'm going to go to the track mat and say alpha mat the above stuff. Okay. So what this is going to do is only where that letter exists, only where that stroke exists on the layer above, will it reveal that letter. So if I then go to this shape layer and I add a trim path to it, then I can animate this endpoint writing it out. So I click on the end keyframe, I scooch up a bit, and I go to 100. And so now you can see how it's writing out that part of the letter, the solid part of the letter. Now this is where the issue comes in. As this letter comes across and it hits that intersection, we're getting this. We're getting this area where it's showing the whole thing. Should have to be clicked to. No, I can do that. There we go. Hmm. It's weird that it's only revealing it at that point. I mean, whatever. But it still shows the point, but it's weird. Um, so we can't have that. So what we need to do is go into Illustrator and start cutting up every one of these words where we need it to be cut up so that it does flow nicely from one to the other. So in this case, I would need to cut this letter right like that. Okay, that way I have uh, one shape that I could animate by itself, another shape that I could animate by itself. Okay, so to show you how I do that, I'm going to grab one of my letters here, and I'm going to just use my line tool. And all you do is you just cut where you think it should be cut. So here, um, I have a lot of room here I could actually pick. I'm going to go to about there. That looks good. And then where it intersects at this point, I also need to cut that. So there and there. All right, so I'm going to grab all of that stuff. I'm going to come over here to my pathfinder and say divide. And what that does is it uses those lines to cut each one of those pieces off. It's grouped, so I'm going to ungroup it. And then now I should have separate pieces for all of these things. Okay, now if I just scoot this off to the side for a second, I don't want to draw this, have a space, and then draw that. I want it to look like it's drawing the whole shape and then coming back down and finishing it off. So I'm going to grab these two and group them so I can double click and just work on those without actually moving them off of the word. I need to connect this end to that end. Currently they're closed off, so I'm just going to delete the caps and then use my pen tool just to connect these two. And then just make it look like it's kind of like part of that. There we go, like that. Same thing here, click this, click and drag that. And if I need to adjust, I can just grab that and tweak that handlebar. There we go. OK. 
Okay, so that's nice and neat. Go back to outlines, grab this piece, double click it so I can just focus on that. And I can leave this as it is. I don't like to, though I want to clean that up. So I'm going to go to my pen tool and just subtract these extra points that are here and then use my pen tool handlebars and just get rid of that little bump that's there. There we go. Okay. So I would do that to every one of my um, words or letters that's up here. So I would go to this and I would figure out where do I want to cut this part? Where do I want to cut this part? Where do I want to cut that one? If it's something that's going to happen quick, like let's say you have um, uh, a J, so the line kind of like swoops up and then comes right back down, it's subtle, very similar to this. I might be able to leave that in and still get away with it. Um, if you're unsure, just cut it here and then just be safe when you get into uh, Illustrator. This is what mine looks like all cut up. So here's the T all by itself. Um, this one should have been on a separate layer too, which it will be. Here's the E. Here's this little swoop. Here's this little swoop. And that one and that one. Okay. Now once I have all these cut out, they're all inside of this cut layer. Um, I go to here, I say release to layers sequence. And that actually puts them all on individual layers. So that's a quick way, instead of making a bunch of layers and dragging all the stuff to it, it's a quick way just to have them all on the layers. Then I can just drag this out and then delete the ones that don't have anything, which are these two. And then just go through and just rename each one of these pieces so that I have it. Okay, I already have this done. This is inside of, not there. This is inside of Sweet Cut. Okay, so they're all named, all nice and neat. You can see again those pieces that I have. I don't know why this one is still not part of a separate one. That should be. No, it worked anyway, so I'm just going to leave it. All right, uh, cool. So everything's on separate layers. I go back to After Effects. I'm just going to delete all the stuff I have here. Delete. Uh, I'm going to import. Sweet cut. Yes. Set this to composition retain layer size. And import. And then if I just go into this composition, change my background color to something I can see. All right. Here's each one of those. So now each one of these pieces, I have to create its own write on effect. And then do that same um, that same setup for it. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump to this where I have it done. Uh, let's turn this off for a second. Let's turn this on. Okay, so this is one stroke that I did for this. Just clicking and dragging that around there. I put a trim path on it, just like I showed a second ago, and then I animated it, writing on like this. You have to make sure the stroke is thick enough to actually show that part of the character. Uh, if this stroke is too thin, it'll only show a portion of the letter underneath it. So you have to make sure it's thick enough to show the entire thing. Um, let me turn this off. Then I went to the layer below it, which is that part of it, and all I did was make sure that I set the track match to alpha. And I did that for every single one of those pieces. And so now I have this, which makes it flow nice from one piece to the next piece to the next. Okay, so obviously this takes some time to do, but it's definitely worth it if you have a nice piece that you need. You can see right here where I just kind of like skipped over that. Okay, so if I didn't want that to happen, that would have to be cut off. Um, I was fine with it because it kind of happens quick while other stuff is there anyway. I've also staggered these and played with the time for each of them. Um, how fast that first letter comes out is not gonna be the same speed that every letter is gonna come out. Um, if a letter is smaller or a stroke is smaller, it should happen faster. If a letter is bigger, it's gonna happen slower, okay? So you just have to be aware of that and kind of make sure that it feels like the time for this entire thing is flowing nice and evenly. That flows nice and evenly.
Now, once I have this, this is how I did the other one. I just dropped this sweet comp into another composition. There it is. And then I can do different effects on it. So I could give it a color. So I can just go to my color correction, go to hue. There we go. Uh, I could drop a uh, drop shadow effect on this, adjust what that looks like. There we go. So that drop shadow, you can see definitely it makes it just like before, makes it pop out a bit more than obviously not having it. Uh, I also have a background, oops, this should be gray. A background on here, I have a uh, gradient on this, just like before. All the same stuff that you, you know, we did on the one, I, we would want to do on these two. You want to make them look complete. You don't want to make it look like, you know, you just kind of like smacked it together. There we go. And then I'm also going to grab, here's that trap code right that I did before. Okay, so this is the one where it's just um, the Trapco 3D stroke. There we go. Oops, turn it on. There we go. And now we can see it being written out on the screen. And then this is where I would be able to set the timing for all of these. Uh, use my keyframes, adjust the end of this. and kind of sync up when all of these things happen. Okay, once my composition is done, once it's written out, if I decide it's too fast um, or too slow, I can come into this uh, composition, turn the uh, switch on here and adjust the stretch. So if I set this to 25%, that means that animation will play back 25% faster or four times faster, right? So I don't need to go back in there and adjust all of the keyframes or all of those layers. I can just do it overall right here. And typically for something like this, it shouldn't be a crazy long animation. It shouldn't be something that is uh, taking forever to actually get out there. It should just be there. Like that's a pretty good amount of time. That was like three seconds or two seconds for this to actually write on the screen. Nobody wants to sit there for, you know, oops, come on. Let's go really long, right? Nobody wants to watch this. Like that's like way too long. 15 seconds for the whole thing to finish. So 25 was good, maybe 35 or 40. There we go. And then obviously I would speed these up too, so that's there. Um, a couple things I added on top of the stroke just to give it a little bit more um, fanciness to it. Um, so there's a 3D stroke. I added this turbulent displace to it, which gives it a little bit of a uh, offset. If you look at the lines, instead of them being perfect, you can see how it just like distorts it a little bit. It's kind of cool because it looks more like a sketch uh, that's kind of following it. Um, I added this shine too, which is also a trap code plugin. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna take the array length I should be showing more. I'm not sure why it's not. Why does that? No, it doesn't want to show. That's fine. Let's delete that anyway. Um, I also did an echo. Uh, what an echo does is it basically takes wherever the frames were in the past um, and shows those. So think of like the Matrix when um, Neo is like doing like a backwards bend and they're showing different versions of him. That's what we would see as different versions of this animation. So you can see on top of here, there's several lines that are actually right there. Uh, the only settings I changed on here was what is my time offset? So I did negative 0.2. And then how many echoes do I want? And then what is my decay? Meaning that each one of my copies is going to be less and less intense. Okay. Um, if I set this to one, we see all of them. And that's kind of like, you know, too much. If I set it to 0.5, it's too much decay. So 0.8 I found to be a good number. 
Same thing with negative 0.2. If I did negative 0.01, which I think is a default, uh, you barely see anything there as far as duplicates. When I do that, you can see those other strands there. And then I did a hue and saturation just to give it a little bit of color. And then again, you get this nice, like, handwritten uh, adjustment to it. Beautiful. Okay, so just uh, that's how you do it. There's three, four different ways you can do this kind of thing. You pick whichever way you want to do it. I just want to see that you have something being written on there. The more complex your wording is, the more complex your font is, the more complex this area uh, becomes. If you have something that is um, scripty yet simple, um, it makes your life uh, a lot easier for doing this kind of thing. Uh, just as a, for instance, let's say I picked this one and I went and found a character that was uh, not crazy but still scripty. All right, so let's say something like that, okay? Um, I could have the entire thing being written with just like one line that would come down for the J, one line that would come down for the I, one that would go for the L, one that would go for the L. There's no cutting in this point. Um, it's just like laying out all of those things. Other stuff you might want to consider adding onto this is we talked about those little accent pieces of as something is being written, maybe you'd want to have a stroke that kind of follows it or have uh, it gets to the end of that line and something would happen, right? So you can always consider those kinds of things um, as well.